Namaste. <laughs> I'm having some fun in the recording studio. <laughs> anyway, ah, ooh, mm, aum. Uh, it's not om. It's aum. And the three vowels, ah, means creation. U means maintenance. M means destruction. And the silence, the half a beat of silence following, means the in-between universes state. Huh? And so they represent creation, maintenance, destruction. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. And Brahman is the top. The states of consciousness. Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. This is pretty much the summary of what we covered in the last two videos. So, I want to focus today on the third state, Sushupti, because it has a direct bearing on the overall purpose of these videos, which is to reveal the nature of Shiva. Now, Shiva, on the cosmic level, is the creator and the destroyer the master, Ishwara, the controller of the whole universe on the cosmic scale. But on the personal scale, he manifests as the third state of consciousness, Sushupti. So let's see what the Mandukya Upanishad has to say about that. The third is the state of deep sleep, wherein the sleeper does not desire any objects nor does he see any dream. The third quarter is the pragna, wisdom, intelligence, whose sphere is deep sleep, in whom all experiences become unified and undifferentiated, who is verily a mass of consciousness entire, who is full of bliss and who experiences bliss, anandamaya, and who is the path leading to the knowledge of the two other states. So the first thing I want to point out about this, which is very interesting, is the last clause, that this sushupti is the path or the gateway leading to the other two states of dream and so-called awakening. That means we're talking about a downward movement. When we talk or speak about these things from the waking state, the ordinary waking state. We conceive of an upward movement, isn't it? We go from waking to dreaming, from dreaming to deep sleep, from deep sleep to turiya. That's the yogic path. But when we're analyzing from the point of view of jnana, vedanta, it starts from the top down. So, because uh, Brahman is the reality, the other three states are actually all states of sleep. <laughs> Why are they sleep? Because in the states of Sushupti and Svapna and Jagrat, we are not aware of Brahman. We are not conscious of the Absolute. In other words, we are unenlightened. And especially in Sushupti, uh, it's very much covered by ignorance. In the normal Sushupti, not in the yogic Sushupti, which is Samadhi, but in the ordinary Sushupti. And this is the beginning, if you've watched any of our series on Paticca Samupada, this is where Paticca Samupada begins, not with Brahman, but with the state of causeless ignorance, which is Brahman. Uh, I had a conversation with one of my students last night that brought this out. Brahman is actually craving limitations, boundaries, individual existence, cause and effect. And so this state of Sushupti is the state of cause. That's why it's identified with Shiva, because Shiva is only cause. 
He is never the effect. So, of course, sometimes Shiva agrees to follow the wishes or desires of his devotees, but that's a different thing. That's willful, that's intentional. Uh, but normally he is not the effect of anything, you know, unless he agrees to be. <laughs> so Shiva is identified with the third state, Sushupti. So is Anandamoy. Those of you who followed our series on Ramana Maharshi, he talks about the five bodies, Anamoy, Pranamoy, Manomoya, Vijnanamoya, and Anandamaya. These are the five sheaths or coverings of Brahman, the Upadis. The Upadis. And these consciousness states can also be looked on as Upadis that cover the self. And uh, create an illusion of individual existence, cause and effect, and so on. So what he's really saying here is that all the experiences that we can have in life really boil down to one thing, ignorance. <laughs> <clears throat> because all of them occur without awareness of Brahman. As soon as we get some awareness of Brahman, and I don't mean read about it in books, I mean actually experience the Brahman in meditation directly. When we get that experience, then we are awake. So in our other series on the secret path to moksha, we talk about how to go into the state of sushupti without ignorance by remaining awake. And of course, the key is the Shiva Mantra. <laughs> Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya is an expansion of Aum. Aum. Silence. That's why all these charts and all these comparisons of the different state of consciousness with the demigods and the types of yogas and the uh, state of cause or cause and effect or just plain effect. Uh, this is all relevant to our practice. We want to be able to enter these states of consciousness at will. Not that we are pushed around by the modes of material nature, because the modes are always in conflict with one another. They're always in competition. One of them is always trying to become the dominant state of consciousness. And remember, the mode of passion is creation or jagra. The mode of goodness is dreams, svapna, uh, because Vishnu is the incarnation of the mode of goodness. And then the destruction of all the worlds occurs when we enter into Sushupti, because everything goes away. The dreams of the mind, which are the ordinary dreams, svapna, and the thoughts of or daydreams during the day, and even the experiences of the senses in the world, the dream of material existence, that also goes away. So Sushupti is just sleep without dreams either of the mind or the body and senses. And it's in relation with Brahman because it covers Brahman. And this is the primary, the fundamental ignorance that underlies all conditioned consciousness. So, of course, the cure for this is to bring awareness, to bring consciousness into the Sushupti state. And this is a specific yoga practice. By riding the mantra, the Shiva mantra, one can enter into Sushupti effortlessly with full awareness. Now, the yoga path can also do this and can also attain samadhi, but it's based on uh, an effort of will. One has to 
uh, still the mind, withdraw the attention from the senses, concentrate the mind on some object, and so on and so on. And everything is an act of will. And as soon as you relax, you fall out of samadhi. <laughs> so what we're talking about, the Vedantic approach, is a way to realize Brahman, uh, first Sushupti and then Brahman, without effort effortlessly and by writing this mantra this shiva mantra om namah shivaya we can enter practically effortlessly very very little effort required only enough effort to seat the mantra in the mind and make it self-repeating habitually repeating then the mind is occupied so there are no stray thoughts no extraneous, irrelevant thoughts or, you know, self-conversations or anything like that. Only Aung Namah Shivaya, Aung Namah Shivaya. So by concentrating on this mantra mentally, uh, not repeating it out loud, but mentally, and continue the repetition for several hours, eventually the mind will get bored. <laughs> And it'll try to make you go to sleep. This is an opportunity. Huh? For most people, it's a problem. Oh, I was meditating and I started getting really sleepy. But if you really know what's going on, it's an opportunity to go into sushupti consciously. So at this point, allow the body and mind to go to sleep. Keep sitting, sit up straight so you don't really fall asleep, <laughs> and concentrate on the mantra. Don't worry about the body and mind. Let them go. Don't worry about breath or anything like that. It'll all take care of itself. Uh, Shakti is in the Kundalini, and she will breathe the body and beat the heart and digest the food and circulate the blood and lymph. So you don't have to worry about that. Just concentrate on the mantra, and you'll find yourself in sushupti. What is, what is that experience like? Well, it's like nothing. <laughs> it's emptiness. This is the goal of Raja Yoga. Meditation on nothingness, emptiness. As described in the tantras, meditation on nothing, on zero, on empty space, on nothingness. Emptiness, shunya, is the highest. Uh, this is a very clear instruction by Lord Shiva in the Tantras. So you should practice this. Then, then you'll realize the actual nature of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, because he is identified with this sushupti, by chanting his mantra, it creates a resonance, a natural attraction so we are attracted into sushupti effortlessly without having to discipline the mind um, more than just concentrating on the mantra. So this is highly recommended. And if you're hearing Shiva Tantra or Shiva Purana and also doing this practice, you'll find that they reinforce one another. They enhance one another and they help you easily approach the highest states of enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>